Hi, welcome back to our channel. My name's Jolie and um, just sitting here uh, with something warm in my hand. It's like this nice uh, cup of, uh, actually it's a little bit of tea with some orange and a little bit of um, honey, just because it's just feels good, you know, to um, just to take a minute and uh, settle in and be present. Nothing like that, you know, like sitting with a something warm in your hand and just breathing. So today is December 29th. I'm glad that you're here with me. Thank you guys. Um, again, my name is Jolie, and today we're going to be reading from Each Day New Beginning. It's it's a daily reader, and um, it's recovery-based, and uh, on this channel, I welcome you um, back if you're returning, and if you're new, hello. Uh, there are many uh, readings on this channel, Course in Miracles, all th those are all completed. There's Hope for Today, all completed, and Courage to Change, as well as One Day at a Time in Alamon. So um, that in addition to starting with Paths to Recovery, uh, we're on step four. So you can find that all on um, the search area on the main channel. And um, you can find, just plug in the date that you're looking for, and there'll be readings there for you. So you can... You can um, just listen while you're driving in the car, having your coffee in the morning or cooking something for yourself. Uh, just, I listen to it a lot um, when I'm just laying down and before I start the, to the day and then before I do uh, my morning prayers. So, all right, without further ado, here we go. December 29th, kindness and intelligence. Don't always deliver us from the pitfalls and traps. There is no way to take the danger out of human relationships. And that's a quote from Barbara Harrison. And um, goes on to say, relationships with other people are necessary to escape loneliness. However, relationships do not guarantee freedom from pain. Nurturing a meaningful relationship with another human being takes patience, even when we don't have any. It takes tolerance, even when we don't feel like it. And it takes selflessness at those very moments, our own ego is crying for attention. Can you relate? So yet we need relationships with others. They inspire us. We learn who we are and who we can become through relationships. They precipitate our accomplishments. Our creativity is encouraged by them. And so is our emotional and spiritual development. We can look around us attentively. We can feel blessed even when it's a negative situation. Every situation is capable of inspiring a positive step forward. Every situation is meant for good. So says this book. <laughs> so there's a risk always in human relationships, and it's often accompanied by some type of pain. But I am guaranteed growth, and I will find the happiness I seek. I will reach out to somebody today. Reach out. Reach out. So, yeah. Connection, connection, everything that's wonderful also has its other side. Uh, I see relationships as reflection of how my unconscious and subconscious are doing my, my higher power. I guess saying hello, because I feel like it's reflected you know, maybe not in everything, but I can see how my reaction is. I have the ability with awareness of myself and taking, um, taking time with working on myself like this with, with reading and prayers and going to meetings and talking to people that are in similar situations as I am. Um, just talking about it. Like today I was at um, my um, 
I was uh, I was volunteering today, and um, this is my fifth day, and I was able to actually do the register pretty well. And um, there was a woman who, um, so I volunteered at a at a museum, at a little gift shop in the museum, and there's um, so there's this is a, an American museum of art where I live. And they, so there was a woman who um, I suppose was, she told me the stories that she was looking at a piece of art and she can't see very well, but she was so, she was really, she was taking a moment for herself away from her, the rest of her family, because she was scolded by the, um, by one of the security guards because she was too close to the piece of art and she was pointing at something and they saw it as she was going to touch the piece. So they're like, stop. I guess it, it jarred her, you know, gave her like, and then she just felt humiliated. I, I'm feeling that's probably what it was. So um, she was telling me the story. She's like, I'm like, so let me know if there's anything I can help you with. So then she's like, oh, well, you know, I was, so she just started sharing about what happened. And so I just talked to her. I let her just tell me how, what happened. So she explained what happened and she's like, oh, well, I wouldn't touch the, and then she often, and then she even said that, um, that her experience, you know, just made her feel bad and that she would know better because her daughter was an artist. And, you know, so she was trying to like throw all those credentials at me of, why she wouldn't have touched that. And now since she's had this experience, you know, I'm like, well, you know, I said, you know, they probably were like, oh my God, because it's like really quiet in the museum. And this is me talking to her. I've said, it's so quiet in the museum that, you know, they may have just like been jarred out of their seat. Like, oh my gosh, someone's almost going to touch something. I have something to do, <laughs> you know, like, and maybe they didn't see and they wouldn't know. And plus there's, there's so many um, things on the news about how people are throwing paint on works of art. So like, I think there's the sense of urgency and worry. And um, she's like, oh, well, you know, now my experience is ruined. And why would they think that of me? I'm like, you know, maybe not take it personally. That's what I do. I said, you know, I was, that happened to me um, because it actually did. Cause you hear step back from the art, you know, cause I wanted to see, you know, how the canvas was and stuff. And um, so I don't know if she heard that or not, but I, but I was able to talk to her and share with her my experience and she was sharing with me her experience and then we bonded because then we started I said well let's talk about something else because you know sometimes people you know they don't know you know like maybe they're you know they just they're they have worries beyond us you know and and it has nothing to do with us you know and she's like you're so easy to talk to. And I'm like, well, you're easy to talk to because, you know, we're able to just like have a connection here. It was really nice. So then, um, I mean, even when I was leaving, I saw her on one of the, the glass um, bridges and um, she saw me and I was like, oh, bye. And she's like, bye. You know, so it was like this nice connection where had she had before felt bad when she was taking it personally, you know, and honestly, sometimes people who work in situations of like being a guard, um, you know, they're just there to guard, you know, and maybe there's not anything to guard except for like once in a while like that. And, you know, they just kind of, she's like, well, they might need some, uh, psychological training. And I'm like, they're just, they're just security guards. They're not psychologists who are trying to figure any of that out. They're just, you know, <laughs> so, but anyway, that's a long story. Um, so, and you know, our beliefs, uh, like if we believe that other people should, 
uh, have certain training before they do a job, or we can believe that, you know, oops, I got too close to the art. They caught me. You know, you can like, oh, well, I mean, what are they going to do? Call the art police on me? You know, <laughs> what are they going to do? So, um, I mean, we try to avoid being vulnerable, I think, because um, we want to avoid being hurt. And that's, you know, full circle about what the reading for me was about. Um, and therefore, sometimes we like disconnect for from our emotions and um, and then leading for me, leading me into like uncomfortable, like being uh, in some sort of discomfort, emotional discomfort when I feel vulnerable, like when you get told not to get close to the art, back up. <laughs> Just, and you're like, I wasn't going to touch it. Don't you know who I am? You know, like, <laughs> or just go, oh, what? Sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. So, anyway, we'll go ahead and say the Serenity Prayer. And um, I'd like to hear your experience with um, relationships or your, your uh, experience at an art gallery if you are going to touch something. <laughs> I mean, you know, the art is so beautiful you know, want to experience it, but they say, don't touch it because we have oils on our hands or something. I think it's just, you know, in museums, I mean, the art is so old and you don't know how necessarily it was put together. I mean, there's not one formula for a watercolor and oil painting. I mean, there's so many different ways that the artist may have done the work depending on the relationship that they had with themselves and the time and what type of materials they had available to them. Anyway, that's for another time. And um, I love you guys. Let's say the serenity prayer and um, don't forget to like the video and share it with somebody if they're into recovery. Um, all right. So here we go. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that can't change and that's other people outside of us places things uh to have the courage to change the things we can and that's ourselves and our attitudes and um don't take anything personal what other people think of us is none of our business right so and the wisdom to know the difference. And it's okay not to be okay. So keep coming back. It works if you work it because you're worth it and you're loved and the universe has your back. It's got you. You're okay right now. Like I said, even if it's doesn't seem like it, you know, it's always dark before the dawn so there's life is in a circle it's just always ups and downs so all right i love you i'll see you soon bye, bye.